We have a dominant elite in this country that hates private property, that hates free market, that hates Christian values, family values, but then they're all ultra rich, but tell us we shouldn't have wealth. It is a very greedy, hateful system. The opposite of Renaissance is attempting to take over the world. And it's a lot of special interests that exempt themselves from law so that they're ready to put a lot of onerous taxes on us. We have the Democrats calling for a surtax on the American people to pay for war against Islamic State. Ineffective air campaign has thus far cost $5 billion. Coons, the congressman said, in addition to authorizing Obama's unconstitutional authorization for U.S. US military force, Congress was levy a new tax on Americans to pay for military actions against IS. Well, yeah, if you bankrupt the country, there won't be any more giant defense budget. I mean, leave the golden goose alone and take the egg each morning. I mean, even if they were crooks, they should be smarter than this, but they just have this greedy will to squeeze blood out of a stone. Dr. Pachenik, I want to start throwing in here to David Knight for some of his questions and comments as we segue into him hosting most of this fourth hour today. But I see the attacks. I see the mainstream media attacks literally. Thousands of articles a week on average now lying about this show, but lying about Trump, lying about everybody else, lying about anybody who isn't, you know, basically part of the end gang. It doesn't work, though. I mean, I'm not just saying that. Doesn't the establishment get that? No, not really. When, when you're desperate and this establishment is desperate and we're talking about the military industrial complex and Obama, he's not a man who has... A strong, a strong sense of integrity or honesty. He, he likes to pretend that. The reality is they're working out of desperation. They have no ability to create a creative strategy or think out of the box. In fact, what's happening now, you should think of it as really the reward for 21 years of being successful. When people are dying or they're desperate in their ability to continue this addictive behavior of self-destruction, of destroying our economy, of going to war. No, it cost us $6 trillion, the Afghanistan war, and we've been there 14 years. Cost us another couple of trillion dollars in Iraq, and we've been there. The military-industrial complex doesn't care how many people die for them. They don't care how much money is sacked out of the system. Remember, a politician is not really a job. A politician is just an excuse for narcissism and sociopathy to get into power. Look at how they treat the veterans. I mean, they just... They, they don't care. I mean, my friends who are in charge of the veterans, I talk to the veterans, they don't care. This is cannon fodder. What basically happens is the industry wants to go from bandages to bullets, and once they create the cannon fodder they need, they really don't care. But people like Trump are coming in, and people like yourself and the generals who do care, the ones who go to the Army hospitals, not the ones who have never been in the military, avoided the draft like Jeb Bush or Obama or Bill Clinton or Hillary, Hillary Clinton, who's never been effective in combat, has never been effective in creating... Isn't that our greatest weakness, is that we have this, this leadership that is so yes, soft? and that's why we have to get rid of it. It's a cancer. It's a cancer of the spoiled, the entitled, and the uh, narcissist. And Hillary is the classical pathological liar who can't tell you the right from wrong. I mean, I happen to know her daughter, who's a very sweet girl. But the reality is that Bill and Hillary are literally what we call folie à deux. Two people going along, making believe that their fantasy world can be imposed on our world. Bill tried it. It didn't work, really. And then he changed the narrative. Hillary will try, but my suspicion and my prediction is Trump will devastate her. He will devastate it to the point where physically she won't be able to handle him because the amount well, obviously of Hillary knows Trump has major backing by hardcore patriots, right? I mean, well, high level. She knows that, but she marginalizes us. Basically, in her mind, we're not relevant to the major discord. What she's looking at is the electoral college, which can be jimmied with or can be fixed, or with the uh, election booths that Sununu fixed for the Bush family. You know, these are the kind of things that Trump has to know that can be fixed or in any way jimmied and, and, and corrupted. When, in fact, the republic, if they were to take a vote now, and that's why I wanted a referendum now, Trump would come in without any discussion. Yeah, even in fixed polls, he's dead heat or two points ahead of Hillary. 
Well, it's not even that. I mean, it, it really is as simple as the fact that do you want this person who can do things come in, or do you want somebody who's never been able to accomplish anything except to... Well, exactly. We know Hillary and Bernie Sanders and Jeb Bush are a joke, and you notice that they've just been writing him off, writing him off, writing him off. Now they've got their different campaign people talking about killing him on TV and radio. I mean, they really are pieces of work. Don't they get running two dynasties is what created the vacuum that allowed a Trump to come in. And if they don't let something real happen after that, the pressure only is going to intensify? They don't care. Uh, you have to understand the Clintons and the Bushes really don't care about the republic. Basically, you have to remember that the old man, 41, J, uh, George H.W. Bush, I mean, a Bush was really a car salesman. When he finally married a, uh, a Prescott, they came into the social system and work their way up as opportunists. Now, that's not what the Bush wanted to tell you, but basically that's the history. Clinton's history is a much more sordid one. He claims his father left and his mother was a nurse. Not correct. She's a prostitute. He, she was a prostitute, and he grew up in Hope, Arkansas. She was a prostitute for the mob, and that's where the mob would go before they came to Miami. So everything about Bill and Hillary is just an absolute nonsensical fantasy which, you know, people can enjoy or they can take seriously and claim, oh, we need a woman. The truth is we have 150 women who run companies like Northrop Grumman and major electronic companies who are far more talented than she is and will come and do in due time after Trump. And once Trump comes in, cleans out the place, he's going to leave. He's not a, a professional politician. His job is just to clean sweep this entire country so that we can have a system that has some credibility and accountability. That's his, uh, he says his he's person. willing to go up against the mafias, and when he starts calling for, you know, not letting corporations be tax exempt offshore, going after Wall Street, when he starts going after those uh, cash cows, he certainly is signaling he means war. Uh, he does say some incendiary things, but you know, again, nobody's perfect. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal.